The bee in mythology and symbolism. Bees are one of the most respected creatures in nature throughout many cultures in mankind. And the bees are respected for many qualities that we attribute to bees, including diligence, organizational and technical skills, sociability, purity, chastity, cleanliness, spirituality, wisdom, courage, abstinence, sobriety, creativity, selfishness, eloquence, and illumination. The bee symbolized royalty in ancient near in the ancient Near East, as well as Kemet, where by tradition it is said that the bee itself was born from the tears of the sun god Ra as they hit the dry desert sand. And according to Hittite mythology, the god of agriculture, Tilipinu, went on a rampage and refused to allow anything to grow or allow animals to produce offspring and he fled leaving civilization without its fertility the gods all went in search of him only to fail but when the goddess hanahana sent forth a bee the bee was a was able to locate telepini unfortunately the bee stings him and smears wax on him making the god even angrier but having been able to locate the bee the goddess Camera Supa was then able to use a ritual to dispel his anger to the underworld. Honey itself is linked with ambrosia, which is the food of the gods, and the bee also holds a sacred place within Greek mythology. Zeus, the king of the Greek gods, was raised on milk and honey by the nymph named Almathea. The bee is also associated with the mother goddess Cybele the goddess Artemis, as well as the fertility goddess Demeter, whose priestess were themselves called bees. In certain aspects of Christian beliefs, monastic communities and the church itself are often described in terms of a beehive. Bees were also linked with the sweet honeyed words of eloquence, and the titles the Athenian bee and the Attic bee were Reverent titles confirmed on the philosophers Plato and Sophocles. And were the same reason bees were attributed with St. Ambrose Bernard of Clairvaux. In Christianity, the bees' honey and sting represent the sweetness and the pain of Christ. And the bee is associated with resurrection because of its winter period of dormancy. The bee is also linked with the Virgin Mary because it was thought that it reproduced in a, ch in a very chaste way. As a symbol of reincarnation, the bee is also attributed to Hindu gods. A blue bee on the forehead represents Krishna, a bee on a lotus represents Vishnu, and a bee over a triangle represents Shiva. The bee was also the symbol of Pontinia, my knowing, my seeing, mistress who was referred to as the pure bee mother her priestess were given the name melissa which translates itself to mean bees and in addition the priestess of, of artemis and demeter were themselves called bees and many of the mycenaean tombs were shaped in beehives the delphonic priestess were also referred to as bees and the Homeric hymn to Apollo acknowledged that Apollo's gift of prophecy first comes to him from, from three bee maidens, usually identified as Threa, a trinity of pre-Hellenistic Aegean bee goddesses. The Kalahari Desert's sand people tell a story of a bee that carried a mantis across a river. The exhausted bee left the mantis on a floating flower, but planted a, planted a seed in the mantis' body before it died. The seed grew to become the first human. In Hindu mythology, Parvati was summoned by the gods to kill the demon Aranasura, who had taken over the heavens and all three worlds in the form of Brahmari Devi. To kill 
Aranasura, she stings him numerous times with the help of innumerable black bees emerging from her body. Thus, the gods were eventually able to take control of the heavens and restore order to the celestial world. The presence of bees in myths and mythology of humans has always represented bees in a capacity of reverence, although we see that they can be used for inflicting great harm and as an attacking army. But again, the nature of bees and the nature of humans has always been that of a friendship bond, and we've represented our mythology showing our affinity and respect for colonies of bees and how they live their social structure and go about their business of work. From this, we draw other connections to different mythologies and different humans from other eras and times, and that allows us to build threads of connective ideas, feelings, and thoughts across geography and calendar pages. Thank you again for stopping at Nine World Chronicles. As always, I ask that you watch some of our other videos, and please be sure to like and subscribe.